Welcome to the MicroLearn series on DDI Aggressive Monitoring. We must be laser focused on providing immediate feedback to students and closely monitor their progress. Aggressive monitoring creates a plan for monitoring our students as they complete independent work or assessment. Aggressive monitoring gives targeted, concise feedback to every student during every round of practice, looks for patterns in student responses, and gives an intentional focus for laps that only take two to three minutes, allowing you to monitor all of your students three to four times in only a short amount of time. The reason we use aggressive monitoring is that all of our students get that immediate feedback. Monitoring that begins with fastest or highest learners gives students real-time feedback before they practice a concept incorrectly. For aggressive monitoring, you'll create a consistent and intentional pathway that starts with your fastest finishers, which are usually your highest students, first, so that any misconceptions can be addressed to the whole class. You'll also have a tracking document with your exemplar and specified skills for your labs ready, and your students should be listed based on your pathway. You'll also need a consistent marking code to use on your tracking document as well as on student work. Posting these codes in class will help students understand and remember what they mean. A small tip is to have a pre-planned scanning point, a time you can stop and scan the whole class. It's easy to get caught up in that aggressive monitoring and forget to monitor how the rest of your class is working. So let's look at how to set up your aggressive monitoring. First, you'll want to create your path. When starting with the highest students, it allows them to move on and allows you to quickly determine if there are any misunderstandings in instruction. So use your roster to determine who ch to check with first, next, and so on. You may want to change your seating chart to create a more efficient path. You'll have a clipboard with your tracker and pen in order to mark student papers and annotate your tracker so you'll have documentation of how and what your students are doing. You might be surprised at the information you'll gain from looking at your completed tracker. Here's an example of what you'll need for this step of the tracker. Your master students will start your tracker, then your meets, approaches, and finally students that will need the most intervention. This shows just one path that you might create in your classroom. Notice the high students are at the start and it ends with the students that need the most help. Here's a more flexible pathway that might work if you don't want to move desks. Just having your students move to a part of the classroom as a group allows you to visit the different groups while still arranging their desks with other factors in mind, such as collaboration or behavior management. When creating your tracker, you'll also need a coding system. You can use whatever symbols you prefer. These codes should be posted somewhere in your classroom for students to refer to and should remain consistent. This tracker shows the symbols in the top right corner as a reminder to the teacher. So finally, what to look for on your laps should be a reflection of what you want your students to show in their work. This needs to be planned in advance and put on your aggressive monitoring tracker. The tracker will be a tool to show you who needs more help with their independent practice. We must allow students the independent struggle, but we also want to provide them with in-the-moment feedback. You can use your tracker to plan reteach or scaffolding for your students. Create your laps according to what you're looking for when you're monitoring. For example, round one, can they set up the problem correctly? Round two, are their computations correct? Round tr three, is the problem solved correctly? When a lap is intentionally designed, it should also be a reflection of the show side of your no-show chart. Here's a completed tracker with all the skills the teacher will check on her laps. When finished, she'll know what her students still need in order to be successful. Some teachers like to have a small box on the side to make notes about what exactly the student is struggling with, depending on what they're monitoring on their laps. So what does this look like and sound like in action? For round one, the teacher explains that she'll be looking for what she'll be looking for and asks students to begin. She'll pause and scan the room to make sure all students have started working. And then she follows the path with her pen and tracker. She'll code the student's paper as she goes and annotate her tracker with little to no talking, only coding. The teacher pauses then and scans at each of the scanning points to make sure all students are continuing to work. She'll continue following the path and coding students' papers. On round two, she'll start by telling them what she's looking for before she starts the lap and then she'll pause and scan for a few seconds, and then she'll begin round two of the path. 
On any lap, if the teacher notices the first three or four students in a row with the same error, she can pause the class and address the common misconceptions before going any further. Otherwise, she can finish her laps and then begin helping those lower students that need the extra help. When creating your teaching plan, just keep these data-driven instruction steps in mind to help ensure that your students are getting the best instruction based on their needs. Thanks for listening.